We're here at EGX 2016. I'm here with David, who's the designer and analyst of Snake Pass, oh, hello. which is a really cool, um, different kind of adventure game. It's hard to describe, um, but I'll let you have a go. Could you like yeah. talk us through what definitely, you're doing in Snake Pass? Definitely. So Snake Pass is a physics-based puzzle platformer. It is the first original IP from Sumo Digital. We normally work on big AAA titles, like we're currently working on Crackdown 3 oh, and wow. Dead Island 2. So this game actually came out from an internal game jam that we had last year. Uh, Seb, he's, he's the lead designer and creator of the game. Uh, he just was working on a spline, just trying to figure out how those things worked in Unreal, and it fell to the ground oddly, and he was like, what if I control that rope? And from that accident, he wow. thus became Snake Pass, what we have right now. So yeah, you uh, control a snake. Uh, one of the taglines that we like to say is that, think like a snake, because I do, aside from like the old Nokia game and maybe snake rattle and roll, haven't seen anybody control a snake like this in a platformer like that. So yeah, you have, control a snake, his name is Noodle, and he has a hummingbird buddy. It's your job to find the gems where the glimmers actually that power up the, the teleporters in order to get to the top of Snake Pass and find out why they're missing to begin with. So. Cool. That's yeah. Like, yeah. So it's the the story feels like really kind of like homely. Like I I, yeah. I feel comfortable with what I've got to do. I've got to get the snake through. exactly. Um, but nothing controls, too convoluted or no, anything. No, no, no. Yeah. It, it's very much uh -huh. just get the snake through. <laughs> but the controls are something I've never really experienced before because it's yeah. not. There is no press this to do this. You yeah. have to really kind of exactly. bend the snake around I think that, that, that's really important in order to like understand the snake. So in essence, the controls are relatively simple. So you have the right trigger, which controls your speed going forward. And of course, kind of like an accelerator, it's like a car, the harder you press down on it, the faster you go. And then you use the left stick to move left and right, and you press, hold the A button to lift your head. And that's all you really need to do. So in combination of those things, if you try to go in a straight line, snakes don't really do that, though. So. What you need to do is just undulate, you know, slither the whole nine, and you can actually coil. We give you full control of the snake's yeah. body, and the body just kind of follows the head around. So you get to do some like really, really neat, um, just knots and turns all over the place. It's great. It, it does feel like one of the games where if you could complete the story in say five hours, however long the story is, you could probably spend another 30 yeah. just, just having fun with it because uh, just climbing up some of the poles I found, uh -huh. really getting to grips with how it works and coiling around is just so much fun. Um, so is that, it, is that really the core of it, just to have fun in the yeah, game? Yeah, definitely. It's a definitely a pick up your own, a play at your own pace type situation. There are no timers or anything like that to, I guess, force you into a, a situation where you have to like get to a certain point or get to the end of the level, even though we're running a speedrun challenge right now. <laughs> but that's the cool thing, you can play it in so many different yeah. ways. And we give the, the players actually different options to, um, I guess, make their way up to the, to the oh, snake. Cool. And actually, our, the lead designer over there, Seb, he's just showed up, so maybe we can bring him along <laughs> if that's all right. Grab, yeah. Yeah, grab yeah. Seb, Seb yeah. come on over. <laughs> Hi, uh, Hello, yeah. Seb. I'm, Seb. I'm Will. Yes. Um, nice. cool. Yeah, I just told him about the story, how it how it happened, so on and so forth. And this is kind of interesting yeah. to say the least. Yeah, but he he is the one that came up with the snake pass. Oh, cool. <laughs> yes, um, indeed. So you you designed Snake Pass, the level, the the, the whole game. Well, I, I designed the original character for a game jam last year in October. So but I don't know how much you've already told. Yeah, I'm just walking the, the in here. Stories and the spline, and, you know, being an accident and whatnot. Right. right yeah. So I was between projects. I was uh, learning the Unreal Engine. <laughs> and trying to make a rope that would move when the player touched it. And when I saw that fall from the ceiling and form this really nice looking shape, I thought, wow, I've never seen anything like that. I wonder if I can make a controllable rope. So that was the, actually the initial prototype was a, a slithering rope. We had a head on it, a tail on it, and then a, a ton of logic and calculations to make it feel like an actual snake. Yeah, um, I, I, had a, I was having a chat with one of the guys here, and they were telling me about how the, the scaling of the game worked in the Unreal Engine about the size of the snake. Right, the yes, yeah, that's yeah. actually, actually a stupid coincidence. The initial snake, uh, I, when I was new to Unreal, I didn't really, really realize how big things were. And if you just take a sphere out of your inventory, you can't really see how big it is relative yeah. to other things. So my initial rope was about three meters wide. So our current snake is in Unreal scale about 30 meters long. <laughs> so the entire world is just massive to sort of disguise that. Yeah. The other thing is what are the challenges in level design when you've got such a new kind of way of design of moving so it, you can't do a standard level when you have a totally new way of, right. of not moving the snake. No, of course. Yeah, it's quite challenging actually because on one hand yeah, you, we have a lot of opportunity to do all kinds of upside down stuff but because it is so new people are also not familiar with it at all so we can't just throw them into levels where everything is upside down and spinning around so the, the game will we're trying to get a really nice smooth difficulty curve because 
The controls are very easy to pick up, but they go very deep. After hundreds of hours of playing, I still find better ways to do things. Right. So it, it, it really that's one of the big challenges to get a really nice curve. So by the time we start throwing moving elements at you, you, you know how to yeah. handle it. Oh, I, I hadn't even thought about moving elements because obviously no, that's when it gets yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, that would be great. So yeah, the other thing in terms of the art style and the design of the snake itself, it's all very happy and cheery and the world is like there's nothing that, that when I played that feels very threatening. No, so it doesn't put me off at all. Is that core to the game? Yeah, or? absolutely. Yeah. I, I grew up in the 90s with video games like Banjo Kazooie, um, Spyro the Dragon, Donkey Kong Country, like happy, colorful games. And I really started feeling, because I still a, a very, a game a lot in my free time still. And lately, when looking through the Steam store and, and just looking at what's available right now, it's all very much the same dark brown, dark gray games all That's around true. shooting and death. and. Yeah, so I really felt strongly about wanting to make something that is reminiscent of those happy times that I grew yeah. up with and that just puts a smile on your face and that's more about the curiosity about I wonder what they have in store for me in the next level other than yeah. just repeating the same gameplay over and over and that's cool. it. Well, you've definitely, putting a smile on the face is definitely the first thing that I had. As soon as I got <laughs> the first inkling of how to get the hang of it, I was, I was totally hooked. Um, when can we expect to, to have a go on it, you know, in the public? Uh, it's, it will be out in the early quarter next year, so yeah. February, March. And uh, what consoles? PC? Uh, all the consoles all as the well consoles. as Steam. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so look out for Snake Pass coming out early next year. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. I uh, really, really good. Can't Welcome wait to have more of that. Yeah, nice. Thank you. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll just tell uh, whatever happens in some background. Yeah, okay. I'll show you the moving elements. Cool. So this. So this is a, a kind of secret level that you're showing here, EGS. Yeah, it's actually further along in Snake Pass, actually. Probably a bit past the halfway point, I believe. Right, Seb? Yeah, it's around the halfway. This is the last level of the water theme. And we start with the earth theme and then water, wind, fire. So this is one of the harder levels from the water theme. And we hope by now, when you actually reach this level through the game, that you are able to do the most basic movement that you saw in the first level.